Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to a bonus video. Back in June of 2018, I had built this. This is uh, the very first uh, box filter ever made for the channel. I mean, I've made other box filters before, but this is the first one that I uh, put together. I put it on the lathe, and I machined it, and I had made it so it was friction fit. Because I wanted to see if, uh, while well, a friction fit build, I thought maybe over time it would gradually wear and, you know, not fit together as well. Well, that is not the case. Uh, the problem with it actually is, you can see the algae growing on it here. It actually, <laughs> the algae actually holds it together uh, quite well. And uh, I haven't found any uh, lessening in its uh, fit. So that's one thing. The other thing is, uh, originally when I put it together, I had uh, figured I'd give it a couple months and then I would clean it and see uh, you know, how dirty it got. That was in October. And it was dirty, but obviously it could have gone longer. So the next thing I want to do is I want to see how long uh, this filter could continually work without cleaning or, as you can see, well, you mean touched at all, and still uh, do its job. Keep the tank uh, functional, happy, healthy, all that stuff. Now, as uh, so that was like a year and a half ago, and I haven't cleaned it. Now, you can see there's a bunch of algae growing on it. That's not really relevant, uh, except maybe the species of algae they're growing. You can see there's a couple of dark patches, some harder algaes, and those tend to grow, uh, first off, some more slowly, and also uh, they prefer a different kind of environment than the bright greens. And uh, they're, they're starting to grow, but... I wasn't too concerned about that. The fish uh, in the tank, uh, currently it's in with a bunch of angels that are growing out. Uh, they're all doing quite well. And uh, obviously because um, of the algae that are growing here, uh, they may not be growing as fast because the chemistry will be just a little bit off. But the thing that, uh, the trigger, the reason why I decided it was time to clean this was not actually the fish. It was uh, the plants that were in that tank. Uh, I have a bunch of hornwort. I mean, I keep it everywhere. And hornwort, just, it, it is a very easy plant to grow. As you can see, I'm still having difficulty getting this off. And that's just because of the algae that's in there. Uh, anyway, the, the hornwort uh, was starting to drop a few needles, and it never does that. It's, uh, I mean, that's the kind of plant that just keeps on growing, and as long as the environment's even remotely reasonable... Uh, it will keep, uh, it will always be green and it'll it grow it's like a, I mean, I throw out a bucket of it every month. Let's just put it that way. So I knew that uh, something was up. It was time to clean this. And as you can see by the amount of dirt I'm getting out of here, it was definitely due. But I don't recommend doing this because obviously, because you don't want to, you know, stretch your fish out or anything. But I wanted to test this filter out just to see uh, what its uh, outer limits are. Uh, in reality, this probably should be cleaned, uh, at, like the original cleaning, probably every um, three months, uh, depending upon the load, of course, it's in the aquarium. Uh, originally, it was just in with a bunch of guppies, and they're not really, uh, you know, hard on a filter, so, I mean, it doesn't take as much. Uh, angelfish are obviously a little bit more um, difficult because uh, they tend to eat a, a fair amount of the cleaning crew, uh, that's a video I have coming up. I want to do uh, what I usually do for freshwater uh, aquariums, uh, and we'll get into that more then. And I find cichlid tanks are difficult in the sense that uh, they like to munch on all the little stuff that's in there that usually keeps the tank a lot cleaner. Uh, so anyway, that's that's for another video. But as far as this goes, I mean, like, like, that is a fair amount of dirt. And uh, obviously this should have been cleaned earlier. And then actually the nice thing about uh, the newer designs I have for uh, the box filters, they come apart so simply, it's much, much easier just to pop off the top, clean uh, the poly wool, and then again, just slightly rinse out um, the, well, in this case, lava rock, and uh, put it back together so you don't really disturb the biochemistry too much. And the other thing I want to point out is, in the last video, the last fish-related video, uh, on last Wednesday, um, I said I, I was wondering if when I did the big planter filter clean, uh, whether or not it was going to, uh, 
change the chemistry because that's the big thing here right if you have something that's working really quite well and it comes time to either clean or prune it what kind of uh, backlash are you going to have is the chemistry going to change sufficiently that is going to be a problem i find with the sponge filters uh, that sometimes becomes an issue uh, but i wanted to see if these uh, kinds of this filter here specifically and then of course the planter filter with the big prune i did on it whether or not it was going to have any kind of uh, you know change in the chemistry sufficiently that the fish or the plants that are in it were going to notice it so at the end of the video i'm going to have a little uh, clip of that as well and it's uh, it's interesting i mean i these box filters are actually probably one of the better diys i've done recently I find that um, for the amount of, <laughs> I mean, this, this is an extreme case, but the amount of effort it takes to keep them going is so small that uh, it makes it, it's actually something that I actually really like. And I, you don't really need to run multiples in a tank. I do in some cases simply because I want to have a, a filter going in case I have to put it somewhere and it's like I want to cycle the, uh, the media that's in it. But I find that these are actually really quite cool. I am going to do a full update on all the DIY filters and give you um, like uh, pros and cons of all of them. Uh, but this is one of my favorites. Not this particular one in the sense that uh, for cleaning, because as you can see, it took me, uh, we're going on, what, 70, seven minutes now to clean this filter. Uh, the other ones are a lot faster, and that's actually uh, much better if you're running a, like a fish room and you have a lot of different things to clean. I was originally going to put in the old one and just uh, the old filter wool here, but I wanted to, uh, again, just to have the contrast, and so I put a nice new white one in. You don't, it's not recommended really. Uh, the old one will do fine. And actually, I'm going to be doing some sponge ones coming up as well. So, well, there's a the filter all nice and clean. And like I said, I'm going to be doing updates for uh, all the filters. I'm going to show you. Uh, how they're working, uh, whether or not I like them, and I'll give you the criteria for my choices for that as well because uh, how I figure out whether uh, I like filters or not might be a little different than yours. So you can see, in the this is just after I cleaned it and put it back in, I pruned back some of the, the hornwort a little bit, and you can see some of the needles floating around. And that was, like I said, that was what uh, had got me going. That's what I had figured it was time to clean it. So I'm going to show you, next clip coming up is, I think, about two, three hours later. And you'll see already uh, it is quite a bit cleaner. And, of course, the filter wool is already dirty. So, I mean, it's these are amazing filters. They do an amazing job. And I haven't seen any uh, backlash on this tank. I am going to do uh, an upcoming video where I'm actually going to get a test kit and test the parameters before and after and see how, if there is any kind of a change, but I don't suspect there will be. So this is, uh, um, oh, good heavens, I'm trying to remember now. I think it's about three days later. Uh, and you can see that the hornwort's a little greener now, and I put in this, this is a piece from the, um, the big planter filter clean I did, the high humidity one, and I just had, a, I had to put it somewhere, so I put it in here. So you can see it's nice and clean now, and uh, like I said, these filters are absolutely wonderful. Uh, then the next clip is going to be uh, the high humidity planter filter, the aquarium with all the guppies in it. And I wanted to see, was there going to be any dieback on any of the plants, or were the fish going to show any change in behavior after that massive, <laughs> massive prune back? But no, it was fine. Here's the tank, it's uh, I think a day later. The front of it's a little uh, dirty simply because I was doing a lot of sanding, so there's uh, sawdust everywhere. But you can see the fish are all happy, jumping around. Uh, the plants are all still bright and green. Uh, there's really no change whatsoever. I mean, they're not going to grow back fast enough that this is going to have any change as far as that goes. But if you look at the aquarium plants, the ones actually that hadn't been taken out or altered, they're all still green. Uh, there's no dieback there at all. So. Uh, there was no uh, backlash from that clean, so that's actually quite cool. So anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And <laughs> at least this video will make up for the fact that you had to watch me uh, uh, make a workstation on Friday. 
So uh, next uh, Wednesday, I think I'm going to be starting another You Decide build, and I think it's going to be for a suspension filter, either K1 or um, salt. Uh, sorry, sand. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.